When she closed school during the coronavirus, I circumcised her. I hid her and sent away all the kids. The circumciser and I cut her. For the whole month, nobody saw her, not even the father. When the father asks, where is Hope? I say she has gone to see the grandmother. I bled for seven days non-stop. I lost a lot of blood and became sick. You can imagine the pain. When I urinate, I still feel the pain. They just ignore you. Even if you went to them, you want to dance and play with them, they will just say, just go away. You are not like us. You are not one of us. You are not cut. They will ignore you. Then that's when you think, Maybe I want to undergo the cut. During this COVID, we had one of the biggest challenges that was the restrictions of movement. And uh, the community were taking advantage of the situation. They were taking advantage of the curfews. They say they are going to, let's say, their grandmother or even visiting their aunts. So that's why now they take advantage, mutilate the girls. When you go um, to school, girls of your age mock at you and they call you a name, which is in Somali is very, very embarrassing. They call you bara, that is you are not clean, you are stinking. You know, and no girl wants that name. So majority of them run from the community pressure and the stigma. So they are trapped into mutilation. What we are doing basically is now training the survivors so that they understand that what happened to them should not happen to their daughters. And uh, we are also trying to show the girls videos of what actually is awaiting them. We show them the, the actual videos and they're like, wow, if this is what they are talking about, then I don't want to go through it. So we really want girls themselves to own their bodies and to know their rights. 